2021 is already proving to be so, so different to what we've seen in 2020. Not just, you know, around the world where if people have been following. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's already pretty crazy, yet I think the craziness that's happening overseas is being matched right here, right now in the RLO Master. Trust me, it's a totally fair comparison what's going on because no of the big names, none of the big Four, four and a half, I suppose. If you call the big five, Direwolves are here. Their opponent for this grand final is going to be the team that took out Ground Zero. It's Solicit. <laughs> oh, yes. And we have had of the 10 possible games we could have had on stream. You guessed it. We got 10 with a bunch of overtimes to boot. You know, that last overtime point was one of the most stressful things I think I've endured in the last few weeks. Which, to be fair, means I had a pretty, pretty cushy few weeks. Um, <laughs> but, like... Jeez, you know, that was intense. And and if we have a full seven games here, I don't know if my heart can take it, honestly. I want to see it. I want to see it so badly. But I, I might just, like, be crying under the table by the end of from how, how stressful these games have been. But it's so cool. These upsets, everything, the, the whole... 2021 being flipping RLO on its head, I am so I am so here for. Yeah, I mean, it's been so much fun thus far, and honestly, I would not be surprised if this goes seven. In fact, if you had showed me these two teams were going to go up against each other, I would say, yeah, this is either a five-game or a seven-game series. I feel that's completely viable, but what wasn't something to be predicted was how these teams got here as we take a look at this playoff bracket. The first thing to note, no cringe society, knocked out in the group stage. The second thing to note, Ground Zero and Renegades each taken out in five games in the quarterfinals. That led to sort of, you know, four sort of surprise teams in the semifinals. You could argue that the Direwolves would be favored against Mind Freak because of the substitute situation and that the tournament is now theirs to take. Well, in order to get to that grand final, they had to pull off a reverse sweep against a team Fenrir that had, you know, knocked out the Renegades. And it was a tough fight for them, one of the highest scoring series I have ever seen, despite the grand final, like the game five of that one being a 0-0 overtime. So we're going into this grand final fetch, and I have to ask you, who do you think takes this one and why? After a performance like that, it is so hard to vote against Dials here. I mean, it's kind of one of those things where I think that like the upper side of the bracket had like, they had the big names, but I think realistically, a lot of these upsets and things like that were like, damn, that's a big upset. But like Renegades being knocked out, the team who beat Renegades being knocked out, that is big stuff. And I think that that's really, really impressive. So whilst Solicit have made some fantastic moves through the bracket, I really do think Direwolves coming up and being able to take out Mind Freak, admittedly, like you said, slightly like, you know, not the full strength roster, um, but knocking out Mind Freak, knocking out the team who knocked out Renegades, all of these sort of things, it's big, it's a big deal. Compare that with it taking out Ground Zero, Sure, that's still that like that's still absolutely huge. And to be fair, Solicit did them that themselves. Yep. And that's the edge I give them. But I really do think with the performance and the momentum behind them, like you kind of hit at before, Direwolves have this. I mean, look, you know what I it comes down for for me? Because I'm gonna agree with you, I'm gonna pick Direwolves, but for a very different reason. Uh Direwolves just beat Fenrir, right? Those are each yep. dog logo themed teams. Solicit is another dog logo themed team, and unfortunately for Solicit, they don't have experience against the other dog logo themed teams. So, Direwolves are coming in, you know, they're already feeling like the alpha of sort of the four dogs because you got to throw Vertex in there as well. They still exist, even though they didn't make quarterfinals. It's another dog v dog match. I can't make the same puns as last time as much as I want to. Either way, I do think Direwolves do take this. I think this, again, as I said before, this is their tournament to lose. And now that they've got their momentum after that reverse sweep, I feel like this is going to be a tough team to beat. And you have to remember, that game three, seven goals scored. That game four, six goals scored. If they get that same tempo going against the Lizit, I feel like they take this one. Yeah, I, I, I think you're right on that one. I mean, but like, you say that, but it's not, it, it seems like they can lose, they, they clearly just lost out on two games Then we're like, we win now, I guess. We win. Yeah, we win. Sounds good. Each of them kind of went, this will be my game to win. This will be your game to win after that. You know, like, if we each win one game, that'll be, like, three games won and we win, right? Yeah, that sounds great. So, like, even if the momentum does pull against them, they still have such a strong threat to pull it back. And I think that that extra level of kind of possibility coming into it is 
terrifying. And that's what I think maybe also like gives them a bit of an edge in that. That, that said though, I mean, Solicit, I'm gonna be quite frank. I've somehow avoided a lot of their games before when casting last year. So I don't, not too familiar with their style, but I am pretty familiar with their players. They are all bangers of players and they have built this rapport, this synergy that has obviously taken them to situations like this. They're a constant top eight in Arnold CSX. They're constantly fighting. And I mean, Tango is still considered highly regarded one of the best ones player within the region. Uh, Vortex as well. I've seen him get shots from absolute crazy angles and Snowy is one of the fastest players in the region. So it's not going to be that cakewalk for the Direwolves. So the Direwolves have almost been the gatekeepers, I feel like, in sort of keeping teams like Solistic, Gambra, Havoc out of getting into that sort of top five area. They're going to have to do that again to start off 2021. And you can't, can't help but feel, you know, the wind to change maybe in the air with some of the results we've seen today. This is just as much Solicit's best chance to take one of these events as it is for the Dire Wolves. Oh yeah, that's it. With the top four knocked out, it is a really good opportunity. I think the fact the, the fact that we were kind of talking about, you know, is the fact that Dire Wolves have been scratching at that so, so much, trying to get into that kind of top echelon and finally take a, you know, really take a dominant kind of week for themselves. But but I, I do kind of agree with your point. And I think um, I might have been wrong on this, but you kind of hinted at the fact that Solicit might have been um, junior Dire Wolves when we first got into it. We kind of ran through the teams and you were kind of like, Solicit! They like being showy. They like being flashy. If they take a series, it's going to be in style. So, um, Maybe we have another big, big flashy game as well. I don't want to like, I mean, we could just have like super fundamental mm -hmm. rotational Rocket League and like, that'd be cool. I kind of like that. But like, I'm a bit worried that we might see the big show shots and everything uh, like that. I think you actually got a little bit, it was Forbidden, I said, was the team. Forbidden, okay, it was Forbidden. So that's, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Okay, it was, um, it I, it was not dire, but this is actually kind of relevant because Forbidden lost to solicit three to mm. one. And that makes me interested. I mean, don't get me wrong. Uh, there are still great mechanical players. Again, Tango is going to be one to watch if you want to see mech stuff come from the solicit side. Whether or not they pull it off in this showdown, well, that's still yet to be seen. Obviously, we're still getting ready to get this one going in Twitch chat. I'm now looking directly at you right now. I'm curious who you think is going to take this matchup. Will it be solicit? Will it be the Dire Wolves again? We've seen the Dire Wolves already take out Fenrir. That's one dog team town. But as I take a look at those logos, Maybe Solicit is more of a werewolf because it does look like you've got that moonlight sigil in the background. Maybe that gives them the power. Or maybe you want to judge these teams based on the players and the merit and their skills as a team as a whole. I think that's less fun, but I'm curious. Who do you guys think is actually going to take this? Um, I actually would like to make a little point here. Sorry to, sorry to add in the, 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 the silly whatever analysis. <laughs> um, I actually think that a lot of, a lot of Dire Wolves' real openings in those games were like mistakes from Fenrir, right? And like, I, you can say whatever you want about those mistakes, but there are a few opportunities there where like in overtimes and things like that, Fenrir kind of dropped the ball a little bit. They were like, ah, uh, we're going to close the game out now, we're going to lose it. And then they lost it. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I don't, I, I do wonder um, if that's going to like, if that's going to be something which Solicit don't do as much. And that might be the edge which Dire Wolves had um, kind of falling, falling to the wayside a little bit. I mean, I'm sure they can just, they can beat, they can beat you with pretty much like without you giving them the advantage. They don't need you to give them the game, but a little bit extra boost and some of those mistakes which were being punished from Fenrir, um, maybe that doesn't happen as much with Solicit. And that's something I'm wondering about. And that's something which I think could I, be a, a bit of a difference. I think you're absolutely correct, actually, with that point of analysis because, and it wasn't just against the Direwolves, but it was against the Renegades as well. Sometimes Fenrir would put themselves in positions where they would push three players forward and then get immediately punished in the counterattack. That happened multiple times. I feel like Solicit, they're not a team to make that similar mistake. I, they, they aren't that flashy showy team. They are a bit more reserved. Um, you will see them go for deeper rotations and try to shut down more of those individual plays. And that's why with the Direwolves, I'm going to be looking to see them establish more of the passing play. Uh, in the matchup against Fenrir, when Direwolves started to find their success, yes, it was capitalizing on mistakes, but it was also solo plays capitalizing on mistakes in order to set everything up. Solicit with deeper rotations won't allow as many of those solo plays to be set up. The Dire Wolves are going to be, have to be a little bit more creative, I predict, in trying to set up their own attacks. Now, it is a best of seven fetch, so there's time for adaptation, reactions, and re-reactions throughout the series as a whole. It's the first of four wins who takes this tournament, and we're already on the pitch. We are well on the pitch right at the moment. No sneaky early plays coming out just yet from the Dire Wolves. I mean, Vo uh, Vortex getting a bit of an opening here. Snowy keeping the ball active, but not really getting that incredibly fast aggression, which we've seen from um, 
pretty much every team we've seen on the screen so far, on stream so far. Oh. And uh, oh. sorry, I just lost my I lost my tongue for a second there as Misty just finds the goal. All right. So first of all, amazing play by Misty. I mean, great air dribble, gets it past Vortex, and then gets the dunk onto Tango. Absolutely bonkers. But you want to know why the reason that is? It's because of the skin Vortex is lose, using right now. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but if you're going to rep the New York Jets, you are just asking for failure, all right? You couldn't even secure the number one seed. That team was bad at being bad, and now I worry for the sake of Felicity. Okay, well, we can see. I, I know who you've like marked down as the narrative villain in this one, but at least it's Snowy who gets that goal, so, we'll, you know, it's, it's all right for now. Um. I, yeah, okay, I, honestly, that one went a little bit above my head. I, I pride myself on sports knowledge, but I think you went a bit above my head on that one. Uh, Iron, you know, it's okay. No, okay, I, do, I have been trying to watch the American football, but the problem is it requires its own subscription. I can't just, like, uh, log into, like, a, oh, I know a regular I'll, sports I'll, I'll hook you on that first. I know websites. Oh, yes, okay. please do. Um, but no, pretty much DLDR, and I'm just going to quickly go over this. The Jets, um, they lost, like, 13 games in a row, and then accidentally won game. Speaking of which, Solicit... <gasps> three goals right now we got to get back on track because this is actually yeah. turning into another score fest in front of our eyes and it's two from snowy as well um and that one was off a kickoff too that's something die wolves have been kind of threatening a little bit so um you know maybe they might have to kind of slow it down a little bit here i i do like the fact that we've seen some um some push forward some aggression coming in a little bit more meted it feels like i mean i'd like to see how the rest of the game goes we've literally seen one minute and 30 seconds of play so far so, like, I don't know how much I can really pull from that one. But, um, Snowy, doing a good job of being in the right position. The team's setting up fantastically, and so far it's working pretty well. See what Vortex is going to be able to set up right now. Tries to get a bit of a dribble, able to get it over one defender, but we'll be able to go over the next five right now with control. Double commit coming from Solicit, yet they still find Vortex, who gets it to the backboard, but won't turn it into another shot. Tango now starting to look to rotate back, but the ball still winds up over his head. Snowy now tries to play off that wall, pass back across the box. That's a big bump but Snowy is still able to follow it through and control for Solicit till they find the opening. Snowy, you feel like he hits that? Yes, he does. Three to one lead for Solicit. Oh yeah, the 80s, uh, the 80s theme on the car of Snowy is doing quite well now. Three goals going that way. Of course, like I say, I mean, the setup's been huge from the rest of the team. Two to Tango, one to Vortex, but it's Snowy putting over the line and that stat line looking quite good with the three goals um, from four shots. Like, you ought to feel pretty comfortable with that one, but a three, one lead is the bigger picture here. It's leading quite close to the halfway mark of game one. Direwolves, if they, had, if they get momentum, they are devastating in terms of putting people away right at the moment. They have the power from the last series, but right at the moment, they're not looking as quite as good. It's trying to adjust to a new, uh, new, completely different opponent, I guess. Absolutely, as we see Vortex gets a nice 50. Zen's able to catch it underneath, but Tango still went out in the next play, and this is scary. Tango with space to work with. We'll be able to find too much right there. It's going to be forced to rotate back. Vortex goes up, back, lobbed across the middle. Snowy gets the touch. It's off the backboard. Tango so far back won't be able to turn it into a shot in time. Yeah, that's that's exactly it right um, right now. I mean, the fact they're still back on the aggression is pretty good for them. Being able to hold this lead as long as they can. Two minutes left right now. Dial's trying to find a bit more of an opening, bit of a whiff there coming out from Misty. Found the easiest shots in that situation. Fiber has to carry it up as well. Vortex getting a clear out. Three players sitting in the defense. They know full well what they have to do to try and take this series. As Tango tries to slam it down the field. Misty from underneath. Gets shut down by Vortex, then still trying to fall back, but Fiber gets to the ball first. Will be shut down midfield by Tango. And it's interesting to me, and we are starting to see those deeper rotations to play. We've seen it a lot more, actually, once we saw that established lead. Tango, when he is actually playing third man, he's playing further back than any other third man we've seen so far tonight, just because of the teams we've seen on display. And it's working. Direwolves haven't been able to get it past the middle of the pitch, because even though it may have cost Solicit a couple scoring attempts, nothing has gone past Tango yet at all when he's the furthest one back and for a team that's we're still relying on individual plays i think it might take a little while for the direwolves to start to adjust although we're starting to see a little bit more of it now that was a pass set up for zen yet with that miss from fiber i do expect solicit to get control right back yeah that's it looks like they have kind of at least got some control on this play they still have to you know they, they still have to put it in the right position zen just interrupts that one goes up high to try and counteract the play from snowy and gets the pass back to the teammate but here it is tango going for this shot or at least keeping it out wide two players on the um on the strike here is zen actually is the one who gets it has to put it past vortex managed to do quite well but the rotations come back in defense again i mean solicit seemed pretty happy playing a uh, a kind of very comfortable defensive style i think 
not getting as aggressive as our previous teams. We've kind of talked about it a few mm -hmm. times now. Um, but yeah, Fiber trying to make a clearance out and trying oh. to get the Dyer was oh. back in that scoring position. Doesn't quite work out there, but the ball is in no man's land. It's going to be picked up by Snowy. So if the Dire Wolves are going to continue with sort of like these more solo approaches, like going along the corridors, I want to see tighter spacing from them. I want to see them capitalize in case you see that first touch. Because so far what we've been seeing is they make the first defender miss, but then they'll run into troubles with the second defender. But unfortunately, the next player, well, that time they were too far forward, actually, and they missed completely. So, <laughs> you know, they've got to find that sweet spot is what I should be trying to say. Because if they hit that sweet spot, then it doesn't matter if that second defender makes that stop. They'll be able to be the next player to the ball and that's where you're going to start to see the goal start coming through. As it stands, Solicit is going to take game one quite comfortably. I still think that's the wrong green team being repped by Vortex, but I can't argue with results. Solicit takes game one. That's fair. That's fair. They also have the TSM, um, TSM like player card as well, True. which is like in the esports scene, that's asking for trouble, right? Like yeah. you are asking for people to give you flack. It seems like Solicit really want to be playing the um, not like the like. Okay, a lot of people hate it. When you oh. call the when you call a team a villain, right? Yeah. But like in my perspective, it's not that they're actually bad people or evil people, <laughs> but they're the people who like like kind of riling people off and having a bit of a well, like yeah, I, the Jets aren't that team. The with. Jets are not that team. No, they were gonna I know, go I know. Route, I mean, solicit. Um, but, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I just I just like making fun of bad teams. But neither of these teams are bad. In fact, each of them are no. quite quite good. And that first game went a little bit more actually of what I figured could have been one of the scenarios with Solicit playing further back and trying to force the Diabolos to come to them and then finding their counterattack opportunities and striking henceforth. Similarly, when Solicit was actually on the attack, Diabolos didn't look as fast as they had in that previous game. I don't know. They seemed not quite there yet, but they did have a slow start in that semifinal, so we're definitely not writing them off. Still, Solicit, if they continue to control the tempo of the game like they did in that first game, well, I think they might actually have this finals i mean they're definitely going to keep that momentum for as long as they can yeah well absolutely i mean knowing how well direwolves can pull it back i mean of course they didn't sit and watch the series like we did i think they got to see a fair bit of it because their game and uh, their series in pretty early um but like not being able to watch that full series in the same way as we did maybe they don't have this uh this thought in the back of their minds but knowing that if you give the direwolves a, a, an inch they take a mile you know to use the old saying has to has to kind of play on you in terms of you really want to the second you get an advantage, you want to hammer it home, you don't want to let up on it. Um, you want to play the Die Wolf style, essentially. Um, that, that's got to be, you know, it's got to be the mind of this team right there as Snowy goes for another one early. Doesn't quite find that connection, and maybe if they um, if they don't find that same lead, they have a bit more trouble putting Die Wolves away. So did you Misty tried to clear the ball across the middle of the field. Actually, it's a good setup for Zen, and that's going to be the first goal for the Die Wolves in this second game. They make it look so easy sometimes. Oh, they do. <laughs> they just do, right? Like, it's things like that, um, w which they're just able to pull out. Zen getting a bit of momentum. But this is kind of the point I was trying to make before, before I was stumbling a little bit over my words, um, is the fact that, like, it wasn't a hugely, like, close game, last game, right? But there were plenty of situations where you thought maybe Direwolves make the comeback there. And I think that, like, if they start off with a lead of this game, just like if they start off into a lead of a series, they are that much more dangerous and you really, really, really want to see Solicit try and close that out now as Zen's going up high, getting dangerous again, goes for a double touch, just clicked out very nicely by Snowy. And Tango trying to march up the field now and getting a demo as well for their troubles. Yeah, forgive me if I get the lingo wrong, wrong but I'm pretty sure that's what the, the squishy save, I think that's what that one was called again. Um, that was so nice by Snowy right there. And again, if I got that wrong, I apologize, but I'm like 90% sure I got that right. Either way, that was huge, and maybe that will give a little bit of that bump right now. Oh, good dodge from Missy. He avoids the demo. Tango, though, sort of fakes that challenge. And Fiverr open net. That's going to go in. So Listen trying to get a little too tricky with the play, I feel like, and immediately there to punish is the Direwolves. Yeah, definitely. Great setup on that one. Huge congratulations, Fiber. Just like, again, find the back of the net. Good job. But like, yeah, it, it is the Direwolves. And I think it's to a point that like the pressure the Direwolves apply to you, making you play up to this incredibly high level. And if you do make mistakes, which a lot of teams will at, at this kind of, um, you know, under this kind of pressure, then like, that's it. They're there. They're ready to um, kind of put that, put the ball across. And Fiber gets a fantastic double touch off the top. The play had like the play had barely started there. It's not a kickoff goal because the, like, the, the you know the game had kind of reset. But off the crossbar, five just puts in the back and yeah, no one there to save that one off the top or otherwise. Like a double touch pancake. 
So you kind of take the pancake and you smash it twice, and then you get yourself a 3-0 lead. That's where the Direwolves <laughs> are sitting right now, and they're doing all right in this one. Somehow, don't get the batter everywhere, and this is more the Direwolves' momentum than I was expecting to see in game number one. Like, they're feeling more confident now, they're taking more shots, and they're also getting some situations almost given for them. Yes, that double touch was impressive, but you also have to ask, you know, why wasn't anyone there to disrupt it right now? Kalisted, who were so good defensively in that first game, they need to start calming back now, and they gotta stop the bleeding. This is a good start. Yeah, I think Misty had plenty of time on that uh, on that um, shot, but was kind of expecting something to go a bit deeper, and so held off on that defensive play just a little bit, and, and therefore was just behind the play, right? Like, um, I think was out wide, maybe getting a boost or something like that, but it was a bit of a mistake there from the Direwolves. At the end of the day, Solicit finding one back isn't the end of the, um, the world right here. They still have half a game to try and pull these two back, especially with Direwolves picking up the tempo a little bit. It's got to feel pretty good for them. A bounce off the backboard oh. is Zen there. Yes, they are. Very, very nice. Once again, fantastic setup for Misty, though. This is why I'm feeling like tonight's going to be a back. long night. It's plays yes. like this. The Dire Wolves, like, once they start scoring, it's just goal, 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 goal. You cannot stop this avalanche of points that they bring down. And I still feel like the series has that potential to go the distance, to go the seven. And the Dire Wolves are definitely responding to that game one loss. Put another one on the board. Fibers there. Five to one lead. And we're only just over halfway through game number two. Yes, absolutely we are. And... This game has lasted a very long time with all of the, like, replays we've watched of just f a pretty fantastic Die Wolves games. It's only halfway through as well. It only just crossed the halfway mark. Um, but, I mean, Die Wolves looking to just keep scoring and keep scoring. I kind of said in the last series, the best defense is, an, is like an own 20 lead. And it, <laughs> I mean, hey, maybe Die Wolves is going to make that happen, right? I, I love situations like that. The best offense is a good defense, and the best defense is a good offense. Six to one, by the way, as Misty puts another one yep. in, and that was a nice little spike off the ground. One goal away from the infamous Brazil scoreline. Oh, that's true. They stopped scoring at that point. Is that it? do they want to make it happen, or <laughs> or are they going to do it? They're going to be like, no, bigger goal buffer. We've got to make it happen, guys. Oh, they want to get to double digits. They want to keep scoring. As Tango though might respond. Nearly broke the Brazil dreams, yet the ball will bounce off the crossbar. Snowy puts another one on target. Vortex can't quite follow it through to put it in. And a very aggressive kickoff for Solicit, but it doesn't turn into any points just yet. Would be interesting if the answer to um, to Die Wolves ended up being more aggression, because I think that's probably the like the one thing I wouldn't expect to take from this game. You know, like given everything we set up for the first um, first couple of series. Uh, I, I don't know, I'd be a bit surprised by that one, but Solicit's trying it and having a bit of success here, really putting Direwolves onto the back foot right at the moment, but Misty managed to find a bit of an opening here. Snowy once again playing through, not able to find as many goals as they did in the first half. Bit of a, I don't quite see for that one from the cut um, as we cut to it, but it was a bit of an unusual play there from the Direwolves. They're still holding pretty strong in defense at the moment, though. Yes, they are, although with that bump from Zen, it does look as if the Direwolves will have stopped this attack, although Misty with the slow play. Won't get too much. Minute seven remaining, five goal lead. I think it's safe to say the Direwolves are probably going to walk away with this one with the lead. Still Tango. It's going to put another goal on the board. And I mean, that was a very nice setup and angle. That's very true. Vortex finds a really good play past Zen. Able to get to the other corner. Like, the, yeah, there's kind of the bottom is being defended. The left hand half of the goal is being defended. So the top right corner is open. Good logic. I like it. Yep. Yeah, he put it in that perfect spot. Something that only the best players can do. And I mean, these are two top eight teams. Like, these are two strong, strong teams. It might not have been who we were expecting in the final, but you can't discount them. And if, if Vortex put that shot in, or if Snowy was able to get it past Misty, this game could have gotten interesting again. But instead, the defense will hold through, and Fiber will be able to get the ball all the way back to that blue side. Time working again, Solicit. And four goals in 40 seconds. Well, unless they get that one, I don't think it's happening. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's happening at all. I mean, maybe Zen finds something special off this. Kind of gets the pass to five, but it's a bit, it's a bit awkward in terms of how it's placed. Here we go. Over to Misty. There's the third player involved in the play, and Misty actually maybe forced it past them. <laughs> kind of jukes out two defenders, but just puts it out wide. It's not like where you want the ball to be, but I guess, hey, you beat two defenders. That, that, that's worth something. Sometimes it would be. Oh. I mean, Tango will turn it into a goal, so, you know, a nice little consolation prize. Second goal in this one for Tango. Something maybe to build into that next game. I, I mean, if you look at the positioning from where the Die Wolves were and sort of how that play was set up, you can tell it, it feels like the gas has been eased up a little bit. Everyone was just pushed so far forward and needlessly so, but that's what happens when you've kind of already got that game locked up. 
looking into game three right now, what sort of adjustments do you want to see? God, I don't know. That's that's a very hard question for me in this one. <laughs> I mean, I think the problem is the last like two minutes have just broken any analytical ability I have because it's just the diorbs are just like, what if we triple come in here? Like, let's go, everyone up the attacking line. And then it like almost works. And then Solicit just like kind of roll the ball in from the other side. It's like, well, I don't want that. I don't want cockiness, you know, from either side. That's bad. I think that like Solicit still looked pretty good in some of those plays, but it, it just kind of looked like Diobes are stepping up. And I, I honestly, I don't really know what's going to what's gonna come through here. And every, every time I've suggested a team has to do something, the opposite kind of comes through. One thing I will say though, is that Solicit looked... Like, when they were getting aggressive, they looked pretty good. They looked like they, they had Direwolves in the back foot, not just because Direwolves were overcommitting, which they were doing a little bit, but also because they were engineering pretty good opportunities for themselves. Getting Snowy up and getting Snowy in that aggressive position where they can kind of find these uh, capitalizations and punishes and things, that's going to be a good start, right? For me, I think a big thing, honestly, that I noticed throughout that series, though, it felt like Solicit started to make more unforced errors than what they had in game number one. They also had a slightly different approach. I feel like they were pressed a little bit further forward than they were in game number one as well. And I wonder if that was a symptom of giving up that first goal. I almost feel like as if they play as if they have a lead, they might find more success because when they were playing more conservative, when they were keeping players super far back, they were able to sort of actually keep the direwolf on the back foot as well. They shut down those individual plays. However, with those passes for missing the like that, you could run a risk if that one player who is super far back does miss though. This is where that chess game comes into play. This is where the best of seven mind games start to become a thing. Good pass to Fiber. He's going to slow play it, but Tango does enough to make the save. Um, I mean, it's like shotgun chess, the way they were playing it there. There's like demos everywhere, ex lots of explosions. But yes, other than that, it is a chess game. Uh, no capitalizations off those demos, though. I mean, Direwolves just really just trying to put any kind of pressure they can on right at the moment. Really holding their offensive line quite well. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. Misty puts the ball up. Fiber drops it down. Still going to take one more hit to connect that one. Isn't there. Misty's reset for a bit of defensive play. Is able to kind of like put it on target. But realistically, it's just Diwolves pressure right at the moment. Oh, Misty. That would have been fantastic if you found that one. But I think that's it. I think the attack has flipped. And I think we're going to see a reset on the play for a second here. Uh, or the ball is just going to get jammed up on the wall. And no one's really going to be able to make any solid progress until you see a crazy pinch 50 that goes across the field. Either way, Zen has the reset right now. Can he use it for a goal? He gets the pinch. But Tango from underneath makes the save. Fiber won't be able to push it through either. And again, these very bizarre attacks coming from the Dire Wolves right now. Misty should be able to just dribble this one all the way to the net. Tango gets that save and solicit they're being forced so much on their back foot right now they look comfortable here but you want to see them turn it around into an attack at some stage that's it i mean if, if you think that they've been making some mistakes and things like that even some mechanical mistakes kind of slowing the game down a little bit and playing more defensively kind of being in a com in your comfort zone isn't in my opinion a bad way to do it but it does give direwolves eventually opportunities like that so I think in essence, there is some logic behind it, but you can't give Direwolves this much space. No, eventually, you know, someone would have to make that motion. It looked like Snowy really wanted to be that solo player to drive it forward up that corridor. And I'm not saying that's his fault at all, actually. If he does get that touch, he gets that clear. It was just the Direwolves were a little bit too fast in setting up that play and they turned it into a goal. That was essentially fetch, like a two minute long attack. And now Vortex nearly is able to answer back, but the shot was a little bit high. Yeah, I mean, it's only one goal at least. Like, I, I guess that's the other advantage playing defensively is you're not going to get a, like a six goal dis uh, deficit or anything like that. Right now, Tango is running it up, doing a good job of it as well. Five is hot in uh, hot in the heels. The Tango still holds possession of this one right at the moment. Fiber gets demolished, but the ball does go back to the defensive half of um, of the side of Solicit right at the moment. So, hey, yeah, kind of working out for Direwolves. Sorry. Things are looking good. Things are looking good for the Direwolves right now. I mean, they only needed one game to really just take everything away from Fenrir and their near miracle run. Now the Direwolves, they take one game on Felicit and well, they haven't given up a lead since. It's, whoa, odd pogo bounce from Misty right there. Lost complete control of the car and that leaves Tango with an opening, gets the reset and the goal. We're tied once again at one of these. There we go, Those first th that, that first like two minute attack you were talking about, completely nullified by a great pickup from Tango to pull that one through the field, through the air, and beat out a couple of the defenders. So back to an even game, two minutes in right at the moment. Remember, the, uh, the series score is currently 1-1 in our full best of seven, and Vortex kind of outplaying the defenders solo here. I mean, a good pass out wide from Zen, just kind of keep the play alive, but 
pressure now from Solicit, right? Like, they're doing so well to keep this attack going. Was that, like, would you call that last one, like, a fake reset? Because he had the flip reset, but he did make contact with the ball. I don't know what to actually call that. What I call that, though, is a strike from Vortex. Good stay by Fiber. As Tango tries to play off the roof, knowing they're underneath, then should be able to clear it back across the middle. Snowy does enough to slow down the attack, but Missy will be that next one there, lobbing it up high, but no one's behind him. So you would expect the defense to clear it, but Vortex to get a clean touch. Now he's going to have to try and play forward. Fiber with a nice interception. They will throw it back down to Zen, who finds Missy. The passing plays from the Direwolves are in full effect. Here comes the shot. Not enough power, though, to get behind Tango. Yeah, not quite enough just yet. Score still sitting at 1-1 one and one right now. Tango pied, finds the back of the net once again off the pass, and I think we've seen Direwolves kind of lose to this one a couple of times now. Snowy, great setup here. I wanted to see this player step up a little bit into this game. And there we are, even if not being the scoring player in, like, the, you know, in the... Attacking D? It's only attacking D, right? It's the attack, attacking square, the goal box, whatever you want to call it. Um, but at least, like, finding those really, really good setups, and now a 2-1 and one lead right now as Direwolves kind of a little bit slow here. Snowy, gonna throw it into the corner, but Fibro's already there waiting, willing, then with a chance to spike it down, doesn't get the goal, and hits the crossbar, and Fiber misses! Oh, he wants that one back, you know he wants that one back. Oh, absolutely. I have no idea how that didn't actually, how someone didn't find a connection of that. Three players up. I mean, no punish coming in there as Misty does manage to find um, a demo onto the defense, but, you know, nothing quite going to happen from that other than buying a little bit of time themselves to step up. Um, but a couple of whiffs, and Zen has to pull that one through, but does so as Direwolves looking to set up an attack here. Misty tries to get a touch, but perfect clearance out from Tango gets demolished once again. You know. I kind of wish when I whip balls like that, my teammate behind me would be able to pass it forward to me like the direwolves consistently seem to. It makes every sort of whip, wasn't a whip, wasn't a fake, you don't really know. And again, I'd say time and time again, following through on your attacks, it creates opportunities. And the direwolves, very strong on doing that, but it might not be enough to take this game. Tango looking to ice this one with four seconds to go, takes it straight down the middle. And with a 3-1 lead, Solicit are going to go up 2-1 to one in the series. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I don't think that there was, like, it would have had to be a big play coming out of Direwolves to pull that one back. So that last goal, maybe not as impactful as other goals can be. I mean, if you see, okay, if you see a kickoff goal here, then yeah, sure it was. But, like, the difference between a 3-1 and a 2-1, not huge. I don't think we saw Direwolves scoring off that one. Ball's going to find the ground almost certainly. But no matter how it goes, this is a 2-1 and one lead looking right now for Solis over Direwolves. Like, just, just guaranteed, right? That's just it. They're trying to keep it alive, Dire Wolves, to try and get something back, but it's just going to get grounded by Vortex. And there we are, Slicer taking a lead up. So Dire Wolves not able to put that, um, you know, put that pressure straight on and completely sweep the series from here. They they do have a bit of a fight, um, a fight back to kind of, you know, from Solicit. I don't know where I was going with that one, but I got there eventually, I think. I think a big thing to take away, though, from that game was the attacking pressure that Solicit had in comparison to the Dire Wolves. I mean... It's interesting. The Direwolves controlled, it felt like, the pace of that game. They they were dominant for easily four of the five minutes. But it was something that you sort of brought up in between those games. You wanted to see Solicit take better advantage of the situations that they had. Well, they were clearly successful in doing that. A 50% shot percentage for the team as a whole. But that's only because Vortex never scored. Tango was three for three in that affair. And if Tango is starting to wake up, I highlighted him as that player to watch. He is going to be the one who needs to step up if Solicit is going to win this series. He did that in stage, especially during the final minutes of that game. So, momentum back in Solicit's favor. However, that back and forth feel, the Direwolves, you almost expect them now to answer back and turn this series into a 2-2 affair. Yeah, I, I think you do right now. I mean, unless Solicit keeps this kind of this kind of play up, I do think there was a bit of slow play. like Not slow play, but like weird decisions from uh, from Direwolves a few, a few times on the defense and I mean it's very very hard to play at this level and be able to make those snap decisions and calls and things like that especially when you have three players and you're all trying to work as one unit but that's something for them to improve in this game and if they take it they're going to feel at least a little bit better 2-1 is the score best of seven series and here we go Tango straight back on the attack six saves last game three from three on the attack like you identified Max but um you know Still has to try and make something impressive happen in this one. Vortex back on the defense, going to try and clear it out. Fiber and Misty trying to take, uh, trying to kind of going to have to try and defend this one from Tango once again. But pressure back on as they clear the ball out quite successfully this time. As you do see Tango, going to look for that clear across midfield right now. But his force situation of himself gets caught up in a defender, and that'll leave momentum back to the Direwolves. 
Fiverr pulling out his own NFL team now, might I add. I'm just going to quickly point out, hey, he has the Atlanta Falcons. And I, another team I'm not sure you really want to represent <laughs> is the team famous for choking guaranteed win games. Um, again, Ooh. I don't want to be too critical of the team selection See, thing right now. In, um, <laughs> in, in Australia, we call those the Bombers. Um, wait, that's the season. Sorry. Oh. Um, I was about to say, it's the same color as the Bomber, so that would make sense. Oh. Either way, though, we are going to see that clear across midfield fiber there to shut it down. But Snowy will eventually lob it up, gets to that opposite backboard. I love the NFL skins. I'm always going to love them. I'm sorry. That's just going to be an Achilles heel for me, I think, all year long. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly, that's like, that's the, that's one of the things I think, which like US sports culture has all over like Australian sport culture is like, I am gonna get I'm gonna get like destroyed for this on Twitter I'm sure but like I would trade any form of rugby for um for NFL honestly Ooh. great game big fan of it just don't get rugby as much okay I'm not you know what you're not gonna get involved that's fine no, no I, I will take this fight oh, I will as like okay also diehard AFL fan so like yeah. realistically whatever I don't care but like. You know, that's alright, I'll fight that fight myself, just like these two teams are fighting it out. What a segue fetch, let's go. Yeah, let's uh, segue it up. Tango going up, trying to feed out a defender, won't find much. And Snowy is able to clear it down the field. Look, the correct answer is Rocket League should replace all, right? Uh, Zen, oh, with a lot of across that. midfield. I will with that catch, trying to pass it down to someone underneath. Zen has a chance, but it's Ed Keith that lobs up in the air. Snowy will eventually take it away off that backboard. Misty now pushing it forward. Too many defenders in the way, though, and Vortex will throw things down in the here we go, Vortex gonna try and make the run, has to get past Zen as well. A bit of collision there, and we're seeing, yeah, like, like a lower scoring game here. Not as much kind of being immediately put out there. Last time this happened, I from, from memory, Dywolf have made a pretty good go of it. Tango trying to bounce it off Ooh. the corner. Great setup, but Fiber is there. Snowy can't find that angle. Can't keep it going, so here we go. Two on one in that little corner there. Fiber's the one who ends up winning it, oddly enough. Uh, but it, it does get cleared out at least for now. So Direwolf, they can mount a structured attack. Maybe they'll be in a better position, but Vortex says no to that one and might say yes to a team goal here. It's gonna be Snowy who puts it across, but this time it's not gonna happen. You can't help but hold your breath whenever a player like Tango gets up with the ball in those types of situations. Defense able to hold on right now and you're starting to feel that pressure mount. Yes, the series is still close at this stage, but this is not a game that the Direwolves can afford to lose. And just like in the semifinal, when the pressure starts to build, it's Misty who is stepping up on this evening. Great double touch for the 1-0 lead. Absolutely fantastic stuff there from Misty. And sometimes you do just need a single player to lift you. We've seen that kind of been true for the Direwolves. And if Misty is going to be the first one to start that, that's a great, uh, that's a great sign for them. They don't want to, you know, rest on a one goal lead or anything like that. Fiber passed it out wide. I think the last time they had this sort of lead, that was uh, uh, the great game where we uh, were potentially threatening double digits. Yeah. Um, but they've got to make sure they hold on to it, right? Misty's up in the air once again, has another potential. The defenders are back though, so it's a heck of a duel right here and Vortex going to get clearance out. If they get double digits in a minute and a half, I will be shocked. At this stage right now though, they're still looking for that second goal that will most likely put this one away. Snowy had a chance. Go straight down the middle and said it's Tango. Snowy gets the bump. This is the goal. He gets in Zen's way, but can't finish the deal. Bouncing the ball off the crossbar. I don't know if the Wizards going to get another chance like that. Vortex still putting in shots. Snowy with the ball through two defenders in the way. It's Zen who gets credit with the save. Yeah, that's it. Fiber was looking a little bit risky. Uh, a bit of a risky position right there, but knows exactly what to do to drop out of the way. And, um, give the rest of the team enough space to clear that one out. One minute left, Direwolves looking hungry, looking at the attack. Tango doesn't want to even kind of give them the opportunity, give them the space. His Vortex interrupting it. Remember that they have to take a um, take at least one goal to force an overtime here. We can get another overtime and Tango's the one who finds it in all the chaos, straight through the air like a dart. I'm watching this one again. Misty stuck in no man's land. Lost position of where Tango was on the field and Able to go straight down the middle, drive that one through. Tie game with 39 seconds to go. And I still kind of consider this must win for Direwolf. You don't want to be put in another equivalent of the win three games in a row situation, yet that's where they'll be if they can't find another goal. I think we might be going to overtime unless Tango can do something here. Goes for the bump, but cannot connect on the middle. That's it. I mean, with the, the aggressive scoring we've seen from some of these teams, I don't even want to call it next goal wins, but I think that's, you know, uh, you, I, one, of my one of my favorite casting um, sort of casting lines. I'm glad you introduced me to it. 
Um, but right now, it's looking stressful. It looks like we might have a bit of an overtime. Direwolf's the only one with any ages here over at Zen, taking a good knock onto Snowy right there. Fiber still not giving this one up. It, like, it was an attempt at the ground from this, uh, from Solicit, but they didn't quite find that timing. Eventually, it does happen. Here's an overtime for the third game of our best of seven grand final. Yeah, of course, more overtime. So many overtimes tonight, but love to see it. That's a big demo. That's a mostly open net. Snowy gets there, misses it. It was a tough angle, but you've got to drill those in these types of situations. Tango with another chance, gets it under Misty, but cannot get it past Zen. And so Linton have had a few chances now with that net looking oh so open, but the shots are going to be that little bit too difficult. At least they're not overcommitting. That's something you can say for them, but you're right. You really want to find those connections. Zen gets demoed here. A bit of a, pot, a, a quick opening right now for Solicit. Not quite able to take advantage of it. Now Tango's the one who goes down, but again, Solicit is the one on the attack here. Zen with a bit of an uncomfortable touch as Snowy kind of drops it down, but no one there to really punish it as Fiber looks to get this clear pretty comfortably. Just dribbles it out, but can they find the teammates? Zen goes up for it as well. Offers options, but just isn't passed to, and Fiber with a solo play might have cost them there as Tango puts it in. Tango from underneath. Too many defenders start to cheat upwards. And the Direwolves give up yet another game. Misty and Zen each going high. And Tango able to keep it low. That was a fantastic and a very technical little goal right there. It's enough to put Solicit onto tournament point right now. They are one game away from taking our first event of the year. Oh, I'm very tired, aren't I? I thought that was only our third game. For our fourth, I am very sorry. Um... I, I, I'm, I'm not very good. Actually, are you right? Actually, tenor. I could be wrong right now. I'm tired as well. Um, yeah, look, I mean, you've been doing even more casting. You've been running the, running the gauntlet a little bit on this tournament, and, you know, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's, right. no, it's been great right. to watch. I am but... wrong. All right. Yeah, no, you're right. I, why, why did I think it was... Oh, no. It's a first. Let's put it that way. It's a first. <laughs> but 2-1 sure. right here. Solicit take it in the overtime. Fantastic job there. Um... And yeah, yeah, like playing it off each other quite well as well. I mean, we saw Tango putting those goals on. Less, like, consistent goals from Tango, I think. A much better defensive setup from the Dire Wolves. They managed to find their own openings. That's going to be worth something. Oh, it is 3 1. I was it is 3 1. Right. All right. right. Form was a genius. That's okay. So, All right with this. I am right. The graphics are wrong. <laughs> Why would you why would you play with my mental? I've been casting right now for how long has this been? Like five hours straight. Oh <laughs> and and my people God. are playing cruel and horrible tricks on me. I see how it is. I'm coming for you, Dover. You're next. You're <laughs> on the list. Um, as we get ready to kick off oh our my next God. match. Uh, uh, I I can't believe you stared at the graphics. You stared at me and were like, I know I've been casting for five hours, but I've got the confidence to know I'm right. It's true, true belief, and I, I appreciate it. I like, that's that. great. I wish I had that confidence. Um, but, but yeah, and that's, uh, that's, you know, why we don't have graphics just yet, which is making sure that's all lined up 100%. Um, but, there we go. We're good. We're good now. Um, but yeah. We're not good. It's, 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 I'm against the world right now. Still. But you're winning. That's the problem. <laughs> you can't take on the world and win, Formal. That's not how this works. Well, you know who's All actually right. taking on the world? It's Solicit right now because they yes. have really run a gauntlet of tough opponents in and of itself. You have to remember, they started this quarterfinal run against Ground Zero. Then they went against Forbidden with that new lineup and Vample now joining that squad looking so, so scary. And now against the Dire Wolves and a chance to take their first, realistically, their first big tournament win. If you look at that larger scope, this is a team that's constantly in top eight, but never really have made those deep runs. This is their chance, but Fiber's gonna bang this double down and in. And that's gonna be a 1-0 lead for the Wolf Pack. Yeah, there we go. We've seen it happen before, though. You know, they they, they had the same lead um, in, in one of their previous games they dropped, I'm almost certain. Um, but yeah, well, they, they, are, they are taking an early lead. That feels good. This is their comfort zone. Um, but they've got to kind of make something of it, you know? They can't just, like, let them, let um, Solicit just walk over them, kind of like they did before. Maybe not walk over them, but build that back, um, build that deficit into a lead, I guess, Ooh! if I know put it. That's not helpful. Uh, what happened there? What happened there was Vortex just finding the perfect touch on this ball. Fiber too far for in front of the box. Misty can't get that read off the backboard as it was a bit of a spiker shot. And that is a great goal, and that is how you tie a series back up. One apiece, four minutes to play. Direwolf seeing that lead slip out of their grasp once again in this series. Yeah, geez, that's uh, it's starting to be. 
it's starting to be a bit of a, a bit of a pattern, I guess, for them. But so long as they kind of don't let that sort of thing happen again, they should shouldn't be too bad, right? They're die wolves. They're great. They can do this sort of thing. But I love what I'm seeing from Solicit so much. Two of their players go up right at the moment. So Zen has a bit of an opportunity to try and counter this one out. So he did drop back, so it wasn't quite a full double commit, I think. Um, but Zen just has the ability to flick it over Vortex. Vortex just too solid in defense there. I mean, Fiber doing exactly what you said, Ooh. being able to back up these players quite nicely. They're not finding too much just yet. That was dangerous. Fiber almost pulled off what would have been the goal of the night. He'd been able to wrap his car just a little bit more around that ball. He was looking for a goal with that dribble right there. That is spooky, and that is that playmaking ability from Fiber that you've always got to be careful of. If he gets a goal like that, you know the Direwolf are going to get pumped up, and you have to go back to that semifinals. And I believe it was Zed who got that crazy angle shot, and the next thing you know, the Direwolf just unloaded the floodgates, came back, get that reverse sweep. If the Direwolves can find one of those pop-off moments, you know they can rally around it, and you know they can get back into the final. Oh, you, yeah, absolutely do. And I kind of, yeah, like, we've seen all three of them be able to be that, like, step up player. I think Fiber, like, like, we've identified Fiber as being a very, very good player this tournament, but not being able to make those huge goals like the rest of the team. You said that's unusual, but it just means there's more build for them to take the reins of this game and just see it through to their victory. Goes with a high shot there. Misty what? tries to drill it in, what? and oh! Does off the side. I don't think the defenders were quite ready for that, so just weren't able to quite uh, to make the adaptations. But this is just so huge. I don't think that was the shot Misty was looking for, but we'll take those if you're a Tire Wolves fan right now. That should be the attitude you have right there. It looked like he was trying to spike a little bit more power down on it, but it also looked like Solicitor was expecting that, so who knows? That only Misty yeah. knows, and if you ask Misty, Misty's going to tell you that was intentional. It's a two to one lead right now for the Direwolves. They've got two minutes to hold on. So listen, still trying to put us away here in game number five. That's it. Misty says calculated. Um, the scoreline says 2 1 in favor of Direwolves, but they still have to make some work to keep going. Snowy caught in the middle of the air, and Fiber just finds it from the midfield. I would like to have another look at this replay as well, because it really, like, you know, Zen gets up and gets it. Fiber just gets a good touch over commitment. Um, a, a little bit too hungry for that one, maybe, Solicit. Yeah, it's, um, it's always risky to challenge as a third man uh, when the ball is that close to the net because you have to cover distance. Like, unless you're a second man, I don't really, rarely will I see situations where I want a third man pushing that far forward. And that is the exact reason as to why. Direwolves are able to find an immediate punishment. And before, you know, one goal, that seems feasible. Two goals down, I know it's considered one of the most dangerous leads, but Direwolves seem to be hitting their mojo right now. And more importantly, to list it, they're making some of those similar unforced mistakes that we saw back in game number two, and it's starting to cost them this fifth game. That's it. We've seen we've seen come back from two goals, right? We've seen it come back from even more. So like, j just comebacks in general from even more. So I, I think that in this case, maybe it's not quite the same story. But here we go. Solicit finding another one. Oh, fight! Sorry, finding a second one. I should say. That's what I meant to say. That's what my brain said. Um, but but there we go. Off a bit of a weird contest, but. Vortex finding it, putting it within one goal. Now it's not a two-goal lead, see? No, it's not, great, it's not. fine, everything's calculated. Back within one. And the Direwolves hold out for another minute 15. They want to continue this tournament. That's going to be their best chance. Zen from underneath won't be able to find that next touch. Instead, it will be the defense. Three king possession. Snowy tries to pinch it out to himself, but Misty's already there. The tight attack, though, is going to be broken up. And you can see Fiber already so far back. That shot, it was accurate. Looks like Fiber did get enough on it to make the save. Now Tango's going to try and slow play it. Nice dribble up to himself. That is such a technical setup. Somehow, though, the Direwolves make the read to make the save. Yeah, that's it. Good communications coming in as well here. Making sure not to overcommit on these players in the defense. Making sure to have these structured attacks, rotating the players through. Good fundamental Rocket League is what you need in a stressful situation like this when so much is on the line. Vortex tries to set up Snowy's in that corner as well, but Fiber just managed to carry it through the midfield. It's looking pretty good right at the moment. I've been like, uh, like Solicit want this goal so, so badly. Sure, it's not like the entire series resting or anything like that, but it would mean a lot to be able to uh, force this overtime and have a bit of this pressure taken off, but Dai will say no. I mean, you say it might not mean much, but you have to remember that semi-final, what the Dire Wolves can do with just even one game win, and how they can completely turn a series on its head. Three seconds ago, last attack from Solicit. Vortex is up, going for the double, and Waterfalls down will be read by the defense. And we are going to game six, Fetch, as the Direwolves bring us back to a 3-2 series scoreline.
They are clawing their way back into this one with everything they have. Not living, not letting up, not giving solicit I, like any more room than they have to, I guess, because there has been room that kind of some concessions given to solicit in terms of like some of these goals and some of these plays and some of the pressure. But realistically, I think Direwolves is doing a good job of minimizing that as best they can, right? As best their players individually can. And that's what I'm really liking about this series. I am kind of getting swept away with it a little bit, I will admit. Um, but I am enjoying it. It is a very, very good series right at the moment. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, like looking at that scoreline, that's that's close. That's an intense scoreline right now. You know, like the three to two to solicit right at the moment. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it, and it's the just... thing that has me impressed about both these teams actually in these situations is just how explosive each of them are seeming to be. Like these goals are coming out from like minuscule lapse of judgment out of defenses. There's a team immediately there to punish. Like it's been some of these quick punishments, it feels like, and it's been a long day. I know I was complaining about it jokingly before, but it's even more so for these players, right? They've been going at it now for five hours and 10 minutes or whatever have you. And that's been stop and go in some situations because each of these teams, I'm pretty sure, did qualify as like the number one seed respectively in their groups before. Like they've each sort of won their way through. Actually, I'm not sure Solicit did. I think Solicit said a lot a lot more games than Dire Wolves. I'd have to double check, but the point I'm trying to make is it's now late. If these players are going to be feeling that and they're going to be looking for that big win right here. That is absolutely for sure. Do we see a game seven or can Solicit steal the deal now? We are on the pitch for game number six. That's it. And I think this is where, like, having teammates who aren't just good, but really are your, like, your friends, you get along with them, is kind of important. Because, like, you need that to keep the mentality healthy and not just to give up. Because, like you say, it's not just the games, it's also the waiting in between. You know, it's like, that's a big part of it, too. So, let's see how that goes right at the moment. A good job from Solis to try and run this one through. I haven't managed to keep too much control. Good demo from Snowy. As Tango managed to put the ball in a decent oh, position, no. Vortex just doesn't find it. Zen just flicks it out wide. That's so good for Vortex, but unfortunately pushed it a little bit to the left. And we've seen a couple of those realistically from both of these teams at this stage. And now we get to see Tango push forward. That's an unforced error. A very uncharacteristic one as well. And Zen is in prime position to punish. Here comes the Direwolf on the attack. It's a good demo though from Snowy to slow it down. Yeah, that's exactly it. Missed, I mean, you know, they haven't managed to break that kind of midfield line, though. That's the thing. Like, Snowy's done a great job of just always kind of being a, a, like, always being a solid player. And I think that's something which has been really valuable for the team right at the moment. But there does need to be something else to step up right at the moment for um, Solicit. I said that I said right at the moment a few times there. But Solicit would like something else to step up. We, we highlighted it in Direwolves. Like, one player just to crack a big goal is what would be so great for them just to sort of give themselves the courage to really close out this series. I mean, they've obviously had a good run last game, and Zen's trying to be that player, gets it off, but Snowy just bounces it out wide, puts it in the corner, and says, enough, this attack at least for now is Misty. Trying to keep this Fiber. up. Fiber almost gets it. There was the demo on the defender as well, but she didn't get the re-angle. The attack does continue. Vortex is going to go up, but from underneath, Fiber with a real chance. Defense again holding on, and reminiscent perhaps to some of the series past right now direwolf so try to crack the solicit defense yet they're unable to break through eventually snowy to try to cross up the field with the pass of vortex yet no one wants to go up for it just yet nifty with the light touch but here comes tango and you expect him to absolutely crack this thing but with that slower touch it does give the direwolves enough time to set themselves up a nice pass miss again by vortex misty though with the throwback to fiber and we are playing that ping pong it's a lot more zone, waiting to find the gap, and there it is, Snowy with the chance up the middle, just missing the beat, goes for the flick and the demo, that's the goal, 1-0 to Solicit. I did not see the demo coming through there, I thought that out of nothing, Misty had managed to hold on to this one, out of what should have been an impossible save, but no, Snowy finds that demo as well, like I say, Snowy stepping up at times when um, the side of Solicit has needed them to. And to be fair, 1-0 is not a super familiar scoreline right now for Solicit. They managed it once or twice, I think, but it doesn't feel that familiar. Snowy whiffs, so did the other player on the attack there, and it might have been an unfortunate situation. Not going to get hard punished just yet. Never mind, Zen gets a de demo, and it might be blood in the water right here for the uh, for, for, for the Wolves. I don't like calling players out right now, but I'm noticing more and more unforced errors out of Tango in particular, and this is not the time for them. That was Tango who came in like a wrecking ball and, well, didn't wreck anything because I guess it was just a warm-up swing. Zen is still trying to drive it straight down the middle, but not going to find too much with it just yet. And those little unforced errors are keeping the Dire Wolves in this, and this is not a team you want lingering around. A few minutes to go. Snowy tries to clear it. Zen can't quite corral the ball enough to tap it right on through Tango now. Goes for that challenge, but Misty does enough to disrupt. 
Here comes Fiverr. It's a setup. It's a long shot. Zen feels a little bit back, but still going to commit for it and turns it into a goal. Dire Wolf tie us back up at one apiece. That feels pretty good, and they've been like trying really hard to get that goal. Like that, that almost that exact goal they had like two attempts at so far this game. Um, but oh, after like like after attacking pressure, after attacking pressure, shot and attempt and shot and attempt, they do manage to find the goal, and that's the big part about it. It does only equalize at the moment, but Zen stepping up and being that first player to get a big goal into this, at least tying up the scores and taking a bit of the pressure off Direwolves means they can do their thing. They can get big, they can get creative, they can get a goal off Mystic from the left half of the field. Set up by Fiber, just bouncing along, kind of pulls Vortex into the um into the skirmish. They didn't see what happened to the rest of the uh, players. Tango is hanging on the left side of the field, and I guess the other player was off getting boost. Yeah, no, he was getting bumped. You didn't see it from that ah. angle, but there was contact there. And that was great contact by Fiber, opening that doorway just under 100 seconds to go. And the Dire Wolves, they're looking to make another three-game comeback. I mean, you can't call it a reverse sweep, but it's still that exact same conceded effort that we thought in that semifinal. If they get this win here, they are going to that game seven. Zen going for a reset to try and put this one away, but not going to find too much just yet. Still a lot of time left and solicit. Again, they're just as explosive at times as or Dire Wolves, but the players who you want to see be explosive, that's Vortex, that is Tango. And Tango in particular has looked a little sloppy this time around. Maybe you can put it back together. Maybe you can get that momentum going once more, but running out of time to do it, at least within the confines of game number six. Yeah, that's it. I mean, still one minute to go. Still anything can happen. We've seen so many silly comebacks from Solicit. Um, and that's that's a bit of an opening there. Um, kind of one from Snorri running down. Oh, Tango, I think it might have been running down the side of the field, but then just not able to get anything off it right at that second. 40 seconds left, they still have an opportunity, shot. Snowy puts no. it off the top of the crossbar, but doesn't get it. Now it's Vortex opportunity to carry, uh, carry off it again, doesn't get it, Fiber passes it out, Zen's running it down the other side of the field, giggling and laughing as best they can, or as best they can, as they feel comfortable, and to be fair, at the moment, kind of deserve to. Oh, and now Vortex Tango and Tango, a bit of a collision. Vortex as well, yeah. they can't find that momentum back, Fiber with another chance, but... Not going to put it away just yet. Here comes Solicit, immediately shut down by Misty. That net is open. That ball's off the backboard. Doesn't get the double. And that's interesting because Fiber was there right behind. Now, obviously, you would think time, you know, it might not matter. But with that demo, there's a chance. Tango puts up that lob shot, but no boost available. Means Misty should be able to end it. Vortex underneath keeps it alive. Fiber going up. Going to try and down the ball and then resets it to keep it alive. Putting it in no man's life. Tango finds the spot underneath. Eventually, it does get pinched to the ground. And the Dire Wolves take us to game number seven. Yes, here we go. Game seven. Winner takes the entire series. A series, a, a week full of upsets and wild plays, aggressive attacks, and just bizarre moments. You talked about it being the perfect opening for one of these two teams to find it with Renegades out of the picture, with the Grand Zero out of the picture, with the entire top four out of the picture. Dire Wolves, it could be their week, it could be Solicit's week, but they still have to beat each other, and it, right now it feels like either of these two teams can kind of could claim that Wolf Throne, which has been being fought for so hard over the course of this week, and I'm really excited to see this next game. I've got it ready up, but there we are. I'm really excited to see this next game. Yeah, yeah. How ready were you? How ready were you? Well, now you're properly. I'm ready. certainly not ready. <laughs> I, I, I may, have, I may have clicked the button saying I'm ready, but I am not ready for what is going to happen in this game seven. No, I, I do feel something as well, like. We were making up for the time loss, right? We didn't have the Arlo Masters in December. We decided to take the Christmas break. All well and good. But that's why we have to have the maximum amount of games possible tonight. You know what? Two game fives, a game seven as well. Just just get it all in there. Just let it all out. This one for that big victory. And it would mean so much, I feel like, for each of these lineups. It, it really feels like with Renegades, with Ground Zero, with Crin Society, all taken out early. Someone else had a prime opportunity to get one of these elusive victories. Solicit. It would be so massive for them, but they don't want to have it slip away in a three-game fashion. Direwolf, though, they've done it once before. They can do it at 10. And then this is a team that knows how to win in these clutch situations. This game is going to decide it all, and we are already on the pitch and underway. Yeah, that's it. Right at the moment. It's, it's kind of the attempt from um, Solicit to try and hold on to this one. Vortex passed up to Snowy. It's a good threat right now. A good position for the ball to be. But two defenders in the exact right position. They didn't make a big commitment there. As Snowy tries to put the ball back on target as well. And um, uh, yeah, they're, they're still holding on to this attack as well. Direwolf's trying really hard to go over these clearances. That was almost huge. 
huge from Vortex, but once again, Sliss is still on the attack. They're holding this attacking structure very, very nicely. No clearances from the Direwolves just yet. Not yet, but then is still going to try to push that ball up the middle, trying to get it to that backboard, yet Tango will steal it away. That's a first real shot from Misty, but Noe from behind is able to find that save. And a minute into this game, still no goal. Direwolves had been able to put a bit of attacking pressure, and they're actually going to continue as well. Snowy thought we were going to see that clear, and that's how come he went all the way down. Yet, even in the 2v3 situation, the defense still will hold for Solicit. I mean, Solicit is so keen to go for deep passes right now, so be mindful. When they start to cheap board, they're going to be looking for them. I don't expect Snowy to give up on that play. Yeah, absolutely not right now. And I mean, yeah, yeah. there's like still a lot of work to do, but I... I agree with you on that one, and I think that, like, oh, okay, that's a bit dangerous. That's very dangerous. Misty does manage to clear it out, so I kind of lost my previous point. Um, but, you know, Dial's back in control. They've been looking much better in the last minute or so. There we go. I think that was a flip reset from five. The camera got a bit funky, so I uh, didn't see that one fully. But a shot attempt nonetheless, and we're not seeing the passing plays we saw from Dial's in the past. We would put it, but, you know, here we are. Opportunity for Snowy. Not going to happen just yet. It's five, but just bounced it down to their attacking half. Fiber trying to find Zen, but Zen a little bit too far. That means the defense will be able to bang it away. And now maybe we get to see Solicit on attack it. Tango accidentally, I think, puts it all the way back to his own side of the pitch. Fiber, he can see cheating so far forward. He wants it. Zen actually misses that play. Leaves it up to Misty to come up in the third man position. Vortex, though, looking for Tango. There's that cheat forward play. Doesn't result in a goal. And Fiber has just been chasing Tango for like the past 12 seconds. Shot from Zen. I believe enough defenders got in the way, though. Yeah, I think that was it. It was either that or a really unfortunate touch on the attack, but either way, didn't cross the line. That's the big thing. Zen going really aggressive onto this one, but it did take two players to try and clear out that ball. Snowy has an opportunity. The goal is not... Shot! No butt fumbles from Vortex today. Absolutely puts the power behind that one. Not much Zen can do, and Solicit give themselves that 1-0 lead. Can they hold on for another half of the game, though, against such an explosive offense like the Direwolves? That's going to be their task, unless they can find ways to add to it. Direwolves do get that opening momentum off the kickoff, but already you can see it's starting to be challenged a little bit. Ball held in midfield. Someone's got to be there, and it will be Tango turning that attack around. I think you might be having my kiss fetch. I'm really sorry for the time. I just think I need confirmation from someone real quick. Either way, Danny is starting to push forward. Shot from Fiber will go in. And we are going to be tied at one apiece as we take a look at this replay right here. You can see Zen going for that next touch. It sets up Fiber in the box. It will go through. And hopefully we'll be able to get Fetch back in with us momentarily. Fetch, are you back with us? All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep running until Dover yells at me. Fiber, with possession of the ball, will take it over the top. That's going to be Misty from underneath, trying to play it into the corner. Vortex going to make that read, and Fetch is back just as Vortex is going to take this one over the middle. Gets popped, but recovers. Can't get that next touch. Okay, I, I was called that I was back right as I unplugged my microphone. So that was awkward timing, but we're good. <laughs> we are definitely back now. I was so worried for a second there. I don't play my mic and then and then our production was like, yeah, we can hear you now. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, everyone this heard you plugging your mic back in, I think, as we still have a minute 10 to go. It's going to be 10 setting things up. Dude, this is the time when you want to be back, right? This is this is it. One minute, one, good. one, final game. It's big. This is, yeah, this is what I care about. The rest of it, whatever, you know? Um, but there we go. Uh, yeah, right now it is Direwolves back on the attack right here. I mean, I missed a bit of the game. It's probably hurt because I was trying to fix my mic, apparently. But, like, it seems like Direwolves back on the attack pretty well. Yeah, they're they're pretty well themselves 40, here. 45 seconds away from a Game 7 overtime to start off 2021. Unless Fiber has anything to say about it. We'll try and hold that ball in the corner. You got Tango in the way. Zen's still going to find the shots off the backboard. Double commit, but Tango does drag himself back down. Vortex! Didn't have the height, but Misty didn't have the angle. 30 seconds to go. The Direwolves so hungry for this goal. Misty off the backboard, but Vortex is there and will clear it back across the middle. Vortex again with the touch. Going to set up Snowy shot wide right yet again. Not that time for Snowy. Doing so well so uh, so far, but just not able to quite find that shot. Tango has the ability to 
kind of try and make something of this one gets interrupted by fiber but also zen gets knocked out of the way as well we might have an overtime it is the next goal which is all important and that is it here is the overtime one to one right now the series the weak overtime two of these teams who have fought so hard to get to this position both made huge upsets happen but now it is up to them to try and finalize it. Snowy goes up high, really good setup, but just gets knocked out by Fiber. If Snowy had ended it right there with a spike, I would have lost my mind. Still though, Solicit are keeping the attacking pressure on right now. Zen, awkward retango, nice back pass to Snowy. We'll try to play it off of that backward, but Misty does enough to get it to that wall. Vortex, able to get there uncontested. Zen, off that backward, it's a weaker touch, but no one falls for the bait. Zen now, forced to push it into Tango, gets that second touch to throw him off balance, but they're not getting the clear, and Solicit is keeping them honest. Missy bumps Zen, they lose possession, but Zen gets that second touch, which saves the counterattack. Now the Direwolves might be able to find something, that shot was accurate, but it's not quite accurate enough. Snowy tries to play through the corner, Missy shuts it down, Tango, Nearly trying to read that corner. Eventually, Zen will bang through, gets the demo, gets the bump. The net should be open, but Tango stops Fiverr, sacrificing his car in the process. That's it. And some great patience and great um, awareness from Tango as well. Vortex, that wasn't quite the touch he might have wanted. Net might be open, but they don't go straight for the shot. They're passed off to Misty. We see the smoke as uh, kind of clear as we have, a, again, a setup from the Direwolves, but it's not strong enough right yet to maybe find the goal. They have to find something else a little bit more. Vertex has the ability just to push it out a little bit Whoa. wide. Tango almost caught off in the rotation. It's Zen going up, but not connecting. Clearance out for Tango should be happening. Misty is trying to do everything they can to stop that one. But again, a flip on the attack. This is crazy right now. Finally, it looks like Solicitor are gonna have another chance to try and score as they get on that attacking half, but they're playing so deep. Misty had so much space to work with, will get that path to Zen, and that is nerves, that is hesitation. They're playing so far back, that means the Direwolf might be able to continue that attack. It looks like eventually they get that ball back to the orange side, but no one is there to immediately challenge, and as long as this continues, the Direwolf should contain it, unless they overextend. Now Solicit sinks the blood in the water, now they start to push forward. Snowy, though, has to beat out Fiber. does so. Misty, in the goal, needs a good touch, gets it over Snowy, but won't be able to get it past Vortex, who puts it on target, Zen. There for the save, but gets bumped from behind. Misty, slow plays it, gets it past one, and again, the Diables look to be on the attack. Yeah, that's it. They pass it over to him in Tango, once again, holding back, being a very good reserve defender right there. And Zen has that's an opportunity an here, has an opening. This could be big, but Tango just carries across the top. Yeah, unfortunately, by taking that ball that high, Zen couldn't get the power he needed to drive it through. That's a big bump from Tango, yet Fiber still gets to the ball somehow in time to stop what could have been a very open attack. Misty going for the reset to end it, gets a touch on the ball, but not the strike he was looking for. Zen actually loses to Tango, the recovery's there, but the boost is in 1v2. Can Tango make it happen? No, because he gets kept from behind Zen, shutting it down. And every time you think you see the opening, you think you see that moment, and Defender comes up just that little bit bigger and shuts down the play before it even starts. That's it, it's gonna be so exhausting right now. Three minutes in, Snowy oh, whips that, oh. Vortex whips that, surely not, it goes up high. Zen has the hit, but it doesn't have the pace. My oh. dribble it in, does it? It is so clean from Zen. That had to be the play, which covered a three minute overtime after a full best of seven. The, I, that was a reset, right? I wasn't watching yeah, was the first half. Reset. Yeah, that's what I thought. That is absurd, that play. It had to be something that exciting to close out what was a fantastic full best of seven from these two teams. Three in a row from Direwolves to pull it back. Oh Lord, Formal, that was incredible. So, uh, goal of the year. First, first, first tournament back. <laughs> Goal of the year. Uh, <laughs> it could be in contention. Zen, with absolute filth, completes the second three-game comeback of the night. The Direwolves get them both done in overtime as well, might I add. Yeah. It was a game five overtime in the semifinals, a game seven overtime in our grand finals, and the Direwolves get a massive victory. I'm hoping they were recording their mics. Because I want to hear it. I want to, you know, one of those YouTube videos where it shows the comms and they just lose their mind and start screaming <laughs> and yelling. Because you know they popped off for that goal right there. Normally you think it's Misty or Fiber. I mean, more so you think it's Fiber who pulls off those Becky shots, but you forget Zen and what he can do. Phenomenal effort and a well-deserved victory for the Direwolves. 
Yeah, absolutely. So much so. People pulling out shots from every single role in the Die Wolves. They beat a strong opponent after strong opponent after strong opponent, and they deserve this series. As well as Solicit played, they absolutely, like, Die Wolves deserve to take that, right? They just yeah. did so much in this series. What a series that was. I mean, it was it was a marathon series. It was a marathon night. Uh, for all of these teams and all of these players, but the Dire Wolves, they will go home happy. Solicit, you know what? I think they're going to be feeling pretty proud of their effort as well. You can't not take away their victory. They had over Ground Zero and Forbidden. If Solicit continues to play at this level as well, this could be a team to watch out for. Again, it wasn't like the big teams weren't involved. The big three played today. Just couldn't make those deep runs. So 2021 already shaping up to be quite interesting indeed. Oh yeah, this is going to be a fantastic year of Rocket League, especially here at RLO. And the thing is, the question which is on my mind, which, you know, if, if you want answered, you're gonna have to come back next week, is going to be the question of, like, well, does this carry on? Is it just first week weird stuff's happening, or is it going to be the structure for the rest of the year? And I would not be hugely surprised <laughs> if these teams are stepping up, we do see more of these upsets, but you've, like, yeah, if you want to find out, Guess what? You gotta tune in next yeah, week. Yeah, Keep yeah. an eye on all of our social media and everything like that to make sure you uh, know when these games are gonna be going live. Yeah, I think next week's gonna be a lot of fun. I believe it's gonna be Son of Jupiter along with Gex taking the reins. It's gonna be an absolute blast. Not to mention all of the community streams coming from everyone. Each team has their own, you know, people stepping up and being able to cover the teams. So it's a lot of fun here. We're kicking off 2021 with as much Rocket League as we can give you. So. Please stick with us. One last time, a big thank you to the teams, the players, the orgs, uh, Fetch, as well as Dover, as well as Hi, as well as Timmy, as well as everyone at RLO who helped put this together. And a big thank you to that chat for tuning along and sticking with us through some of our technical difficulties. Normally when a stream is having those issues, you expect the numbers to drop. They just kept rising throughout the night, which is absolutely phenomenal stuff. We definitely feel that love here, and we love throwing it back. So until next week, I have been formal, joined by Fetch. Have a great night and a great week, everybody.